Hello friends, so this is the second video in addition to the previous video on nail plate in proximal tibial fractures. So this case is slightly different. We have a large diaphyseal spike which is difficult to reduce in nailing process. So we'll be seeing all the steps that we went through for attaining a reduction and fixation in this type of injury in which we had a depressed lateral condylar fracture along with a large medial condylar fragment which was having a diaphyseal extension and you see this tongue pattern of the proximal diaphyseal fracture is quite unstable so nailing in this fracture is going to be tricky so first of all whenever you are planning for nail plate first priority is to get the fracture reduced you have to create a reduced metaphyseal block and also you have to reduce the diaphyseal block so whenever the condylar extension is there in the diaphysis the reduction in the diaphyseal part is also of paramount importance because if the diaphyseal part is not appropriately reduced you might mal reduce the condyle as well so you have to ensure that the diaphyseal spike is well reduced when you are constructing the metaphyseal or you can say the periarticular block. So what we have used here, we have used the Weber's clamp to reduce the fracture and placed a K wire so that the reduction remains secure while we manipulate the metaphyseal area. So this thing is quite clear. So we have reduced the fracture in the diaphyseal part in AP as well as lateral view. Now we have to come to the metaphyseal part or you can say the periarticular part. You see once we have reduced the diaphyseal part, the medial condyle appears to be somewhat reduced. Now we have to take care. There was another injury here. There was a minimally displaced postromedial column injury as well. So what we have done since the fracture was a simple one, we have placed a K wire to maintain the reduction of this postromedial fragment. We are trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle by reducing the simple fragments first followed by the complex ones. So we have reduced the diaphyseal part, we have reduced the postromedial simple fragment. Now we have to proceed towards the lateral condyle which is having combination and a depressed fragment as well. You see there is a large depressed fragment which is visible in AP as well as lateral view. See we have used this L-shaped punch to reduce this depressed fragment. While serially checking the AP and lateral view we are able to lift the fragment to a higher level and ultimately we are able to bring it to a near normal level. See earlier it was here now we have brought it up till here and it's quite close to the anterior margin of the lateral condyle. This part is the medial condyle. In previous videos, I've told you the importance of the oblique views. Oblique views tend to show you the lateral condyle and medial condyle separately. So here this concave part is the medial condyle and this anterior part is the lateral condyle. And once the depressed fragment has been reduced to a near appropriate level, like here, we have placed few K bars from the periphery towards the depressed fragment but here the depression is not up till here the part which is adjacent to the tibial spine is also depressed so we have lifted that fragment also then span the k wires further medially like here so multiple k wires have been placed and the k wires have been exchanged with new k wires so that the wires are not going to block the area for plate and also the nail in lateral view you have to ensure that all the wires that have been placed to reduce the depression or the condyle are in a zone which is posterior to the entry point you see here the entry point will come somewhere here at the junction of the articular surface and the anterior margin of the tibia the wires should not come in this zone otherwise they will hinder the nailing process in ap view they can come anywhere but in lateral view this part should be clear now you have to bear caution while reaming and nail insertion because i told you this spike fragment is unstable the moment you insert the nail it will open like a tongue so you have to ensure that during the reaming process and during the nail insertion the reduction is secured while during reaming it won't be much problem because the reamer is a flexible structure and it will take the track according to the path of least resistance but when the nail is inserted nail is actually rigid it will try to give the bone the shape of the nail so ultimately what will happen this spike is going to open up so what you can do you have heard about the polar screws so we have used the polar pins here we have used 3.5 mm steenman pin as the polar pins so they are alternative of polar screws if you don't want to insert the screw because sometimes what happen when you insert the screw there is a stress riser and there is a fracture in this zone so the polar pin has been placed here and you see here you see here while we are inserting the nail the fracture is not opening up here but the polar pin here has been placed only in the proximal fragment 
what happens when we insert the nail distally you see here we have inserted a polar pin here and when we are inserting the nail distally what happens this fracture is opening up here also so we need another polar pin anteriorly here in the distal fragment because we want this fragment the anterior part of the distal fragment to come more anteriorly therefore placement of a polar pin here here where the pointer is is the area of interest for placement of a polar screw or polar pin so this is the thing that we ultimately did you see here we have inserted the polar pin here anteriorly and ultimately the nail is going posteriorly and this anterior part which was earlier going earlier going posteriorly bringing opening at the fracture side has now been approximated to the proximal fragment the big opening here is not visible here so our purpose of placement of polar pin has been utilized here so once you are done with the nail insertion you can do the distal locking process and also ensure in APU also that everything is fine so two polar pins have been placed the direction of the diaphyseal part seems to be okay now once we have inserted the nail we will go with the distal locking part and then we will proceed towards the proximal part where we want to place a plate for rafting the depressed fragment now you have to ensure that the plate is as close to the margin of the articular surface because ultimately the screws will come somewhere here if you keep your plate bit down the screws will come somewhere here and they will not be able to rough the depressed fragment adequately so we have to ensure that the plate rim and the articular rim are almost at the same level the plate however should not be higher than the articular margin and in lateral view you have to ensure that all your screw holes are behind the nail otherwise the screws are going to hit the nail and you will not be able to rough the depressed fragment adequately also whenever the depressed fragment is posterior you try to keep the plate as posterior as possible so you have to expose your exposures should be adequate over the fibular head you should be able to palpate up till this area when you are placing your plate by that you will be able to push your plate as posterior as possible and the rafting will be good also the plate needs to be central in the distal part also that is obvious then what you need to do you have to sequentially start placement of the screws if the drill bit is hitting any k wire what you can do you can simply withdraw that k wire but do not withdraw all the k wires so you have to do it in a sequential process you place a screw remove k wire remove one k wire you place another screw remove another k wire by that your reduction will remain secured and also you have to take care in this zone you can add stability here by spanning the plate towards the distal fragment so the fracture was an oblique one that means starting from here ending till here so we have placed lag screws so that the plate is now getting hold in the distal fragment this part is the distal fragment and this part is the proximal fragment and you have to ensure that you do not rigidly fix a plate in this zone otherwise in diaphyseal part which you have already stabilized with the nail will go into a rigid construct and that will impair the healing process because the reduction might not be perfectly anatomical you have to place the cortical screws here and the cortical screws need not to be perfectly tight you just need those screws for stabilization of the plate with the diaphysis otherwise what you can do you can use a shorter plate also and use that plate only for attaining stability of the condylar block but here since the fracture was an unstable one so these screws are actually holding that unstable spike fragment in the correct position because ultimately we are going to remove the polar pins here so we might need additional stability and those screws cortical screws which are spanning the fracture will provide the additional stability that is required now this patient also had a postromedial undisplaced fragment so we have placed a few stab incisions and placed positional screws to stabilize that fragment you see the cortical screw is not perfectly tight the space is visible here so the only purpose of the cortical screw here is to position the plate along the diaphysis and also to stabilize the fragment that was opening anteriorly the purpose is not at all to snugly fit the plate over the diaphyseal surface or to achieve compression since we don't want any rigidity at the fracture site in the diaphyseal part only rigidity we want is in the periarticular zone where we want to place as many screws as possible so that the stability is not compromised at all and also the locking screws may hit the nail while with the cortical screws you have enough space to toggle your screw anteriorly or posteriorly wherever the space is available anterior or posterior to the nail so ultimately this kind of construct was achieved 
you see the screws from the plate are getting hold in the distal fragment this whole part is the distal fragment and the screws tip are ending here so the plate is holding the proximal fragment here and ending up here and the only purpose is to gain the hold not the compression at the fracture site because ultimately this spike is going to heal by the secondary healing or you can say the callus formation but whenever there's huge gap like we had seen in the previous image when there's opening here ultimately what happens this spike tends to irritate the skin because of the huge gap and limited mobility it may also go into non-union so you have to take care that the spike is aligned in an appropriate manner there should not be opening up here so ultimately at one and a half month or you can say six weeks we had a check x-ray of this patient you see the healing is evident and a bridging bone can be seen here the anterior gap is also getting filled with new bone here and the opening and small opening here is also getting filled with new bone formation in ap view also you see the raft is perfectly functioning this was the raft we have created the depressed fragment was elevated and the reduction of the depressed fragment is also maintained the alignment has not changed and healing is going on so ultimately the outcome was satisfactory there were no wound related complications because the wound was very small this was the size of the wound and few stab incidents were there for placement of the screws and the interlocking bolts so that is something we wanted so if you have any queries regarding this case, you can just put those in comments. I will be happy to clarify all those. Thank you.